Hey guys, in this quick iNav how-to video, I'm going to be guiding you through the process of wiring up an external current sensor to a Matec flight controller and also go through the config in iNav. I did this recently on my big rack with the help from a couple of other guys online, but I realised there's very little info out there on this subject, which is why I decided to put this video together. At the moment I have 10 fixed wing FPV aircraft and all of these are running iNav, and all of them are doing so on Matec wing flight controllers. I think they're excellent flight controllers and for 90% of builds they're just spot on. However, the weakness is the shunt resistor for sensing current. If you're planning on running 60 amps plus continuously, there's a good chance you'll melt the solder and it will remove itself from the board, meaning you'll just completely black out and lose all power to everything on your plane. Yeah, they do state that it's a 132 amp current sensor in many of the adverts, but this is the burst rating. Uh, which means it's good for that up to 10 seconds. But I really wouldn't want to put even 100 amp over this tiny little shunt. If you go to the Matec website, they do specify there that the current sensors are good for up to 60 amps continuous. And this is like the F765 and the F722. Some of the smaller boards might even have a smaller amp rating. So the solution to this is for your motor current to bypass the FC by going through an external current sensor, which then provides the power usage data to the FC. So I'll talk about the gear that I put in my DRAC for external current sensing and I'll put the links in the video description. But basically you can choose any current sensor as long as it outputs a 0 to 3.3 volt signal because that is all iNav or the Matic flight controller is interested in to interpret the number of amps being used. The one I've installed on my DRAC is this Mouch Hall current sensor up to 200 amp and up to 14S. It also comes pre-soldered with 10 gauge cables but it requires a very specific voltage supply to power it, and that is 5.35 volts. So I ordered this BEC that is designed to go with it. It's not exactly cheap, but I thought it was well worth it to protect the amount of money I've invested in that drack up in the air. This BEC accepts up to 6S, but if you're planning on running up to 14S, you can get this one, but this is double the price. Next, we'll take a look at the physical wiring. So this is the configuration you'd be used to normally, um, which is wiring the battery to the BAT connectors and the ESC to the ESC connectors. But now we're going to wire the positive and negative from the battery through the current sensor straight to the ESC. Make sure you take note of the current flow direction, which is normally indicated on the current sensor. You also want to connect the positive and the ground to the battery pads on the FC. This is to power the FC and therefore everything connected to it. You'll notice that I've tapped into the live aft the current sensor, which means that all of the power usage by the FC is taken into account on your amp and milliamp readings. We tap into the live and the ground again to supply power to the BEC, which is then going to power your current sensor. The nice thing is the BEC comes with the right connector, so you can plug it straight into your current sensor. The final part of the wiring is to connect the current sensor to the flight controller so that it can supply information about the amps being drawn. You can connect the signal output to the airspeed sensor pads or the RSSI. In my example here, I've used the RSSI pad. So the I out cable, which is a yellow one, connects to your RSSI pad. And then you connect any one of the two ground outputs to a spare ground on your flight controller. In iNav, we just need to remap the ADC channels and also change the scale on the current sensor. So first of all, if you go into the CLI tab and type get ADC, it will list the four ADC channels. This might vary from board to board. In this example, I'm using a Matec F765. The default on this is for the RSSI ADC to be on channel three and the current ADC to be on channel two. So basically all we're gonna do is swap these two around. So if we type set RSSI ADC channel equals two and hit enter, and then next we're gonna set current ADC channel equals three and hit enter. And then we just need to save those settings. Now your flight controller will be expecting the current sensing data through the RSSI pad. The final part of this now is to go into the configuration tab and we need to change the scale, the output voltage to milliamps. If your current sensor came with information about the amps per volt, then you can use this formula to calculate the number that goes into this field. We multiply the amps per volt figure by 3.3, which is the maximum voltage output for the signal. And in my case, this equals 211.8. So this is the max number of amps on this current sensor. 
Then what we do is 3,300 millivolts divided by the max number of amps, which is 211.8, equals 15.6. This figure is then multiplied by 10, giving us a figure of 156. This then goes into the scale the output voltage field. Another way you can calculate the number that goes into this field is you can use a tool designed by Darren Lines on his website, which is really nice. I'll put a link to that in the video description. And basically what you have to do is take some amp readings, compare them on the iNav OSD to what you have on a watt meter, and then you put the numbers into his calculator and it tells you what the new value should be. Thank you for watching. I hope that was useful and enjoy your high amp flying.